on this episode, we are over the hump. Now, the difficult part comes now. <laughs> Christian is already working on solutions. <laughs> and of course, the solutions involve explosions. Very simple solutions to complicated problems. Hi everybody, this is Christian from LazyDevs Academy. Welcome to episode 79 <laughs> of the advanced web tutorial. Um, uh, let's let's jump right into Kaushmap because today's gonna be a packed episode. We are, I, there's two things I wanna do today. Two things, two things. One is gonna be bullet canceling. The other one is gonna be bullet sealing. I wanna do both things at the same time. Wow. Um, the reason why I want to do it already now because it's because we kind of we kind of already have this, right? We, we kind of figured this already out a little bit. We, we had some we did some setup that allows us to pull these things off, hopefully uh, today. Uh, let us start with bullet canceling. So bullet canceling means that for some certain enemies, if uh, we shoot them down, all of the bullets that belong to that enemy that the enemy has shot already will poof disappear. And we already did some setup where we actually made this uh, this happen. Uh, let me see. When we spawn an enemy, there we go. Enemies have a lot of information. Look at this. This is just like 116 tokens just to spawn a single enemy. We have to maybe... <laughs> there is... <laughs> <laughs> there is some tokens to be saved here. Um, but yeah, it has kank. <laughs> Just the property kank. <laughs> and, and if it's kanking, that means that we that means that we are uh, it's supposed to cancel the bullets. Um, so I think the way we set it up is that if kank is set to one, that means that we're bullet canceling. Um I'm wondering if I should put just true in here. It's gonna be fine. Now, currently, the only enemy that has the kank set to one is the big or chunky enemy, right? Uh, so let me scroll so we can see the chunky enemy. Uh, let me set the scroll so we can see the chunky enemy. Uh, so scroll is here, zero. Uh, 220 was the last time that was that is too far away still. Let's go 320. Uh, I think we're gonna see the, the, the kanky enemies. Oh, okay, let's go 420. 420, baby! Ah, there we go. That, that's the Kanki's enemy. So if I shoot him down, I want the, uh, the bullets also to disappear. So there's a multi-step process here. First, I want to make sure that the bullets disappear. And then I want to make a nice graphical effect because I don't, don't want it just to like poof out. Like I just, I want to have maybe a little, a tiny little explosion there. Uh, not, not explosion, but like a, like a, like a, you will see. Right, 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 right. Shots versus enemies. Here we go. Here we go. Um, here is where the enemy explodes. And here is where I want to check if that's a kanky enemy. So uh, we're gonna go if e dot kank equals one or greater than zero. No, I don't know, greater than zero. Then, and so here's bullet cancel. So now we need to loop through all of the bullets and see if those bullets belong to the enemy. Now, we don't actually have a property of the bullets. The bullets don't remember which enemy they respond from. And so that's something that we maybe need to add in the first place. Um, so let's go to do bulls. No, not do bulls. Uh, do bull queue. So this is where we are going through the queue of the, of the, of the bullets. And then here's where we actually, here's where we are we're spawning the bullets, so I'm thinking I'm gonna put the bullets. Uh, I'm here. The bullet will remember what I mean. They, they they came from. So we're gonna go n equals n. So each bullet will remember the enemy that that they're, that fired it. And then we're gonna go for b in all bullets. Do or oh, bulls, I think, right? And I'm gonna go if e dot n equals e, no, if b dot n equals e, then del 
bulls. That's it. That's it. That's that's what. That's, that's all there is. That's bullet canceling. <laughs> that's seventeen tokens for bullet canceling. It seems like this this big deal, but it actually is it's pretty fair, fairly easy. Let's see if this even works. Maybe there was a mistake, of Rooney. Oh, I think it worked. I wasn't quite sure. I wasn't paid. Yeah, it worked. The bullets disappeared. Easy peasy for breezy. Now, the difficult part comes now. <laughs> Where I don't I, 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 um, I don't want the bullets just to disappear. Uh, I want them. I mean, we could we, we could make the bullets explode. <laughs> Let's just see how this works. I'm, I'm eager to I'm eager to to see how that works. No, I <laughs> I love it, but I also acknowledge that this is just too much. Um, no, I don't want to explode them like this. I want them to... Um, I want to introduce a new bullet type, uh, or a new particle type, and that is going to be... Um, let's call it wave, or bubble. Hmm. Let's call it wave. And that means that... Um, that will just draw a little circle. A little circle! And then I want to draw a whole bunch of little circles. Like the, each bullet should turn into like a little circle that, that explodes outward. Like a little, I guess, shwave. <laughs> I guess shwave. Let's just call it shwave. Uh, just like as a reference to the original. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a shock wave, basically. Um, all right. So this will be very easy. Um, now let me see where do we where do we draw the bubble? This is the blob, right? Um, so we have a p dot r, and we're going to use that. It's going to be very easy, a, a very simple shave. We're going to go um, circ fill. No, not circ, just circ. Um, p dot x, p dot y, p dot r. And then we're gonna hard code it to seven. I, we could get the color from the particle, but I uh, maybe we should, right? Let's go p dot c. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is this is now the shwave particle, and then now we just need to create the particle. Um, let's just copy some code from some other place, and we're gonna we're gonna adapt it to to work with with for us. Okay, so we're going to add to the particles. Uh, draw is going to be shwave. Uh, x is going to be um, b dot x. Y is going to be b dot y. C tab, no C tab, baby. But we're going to start with C equals 7. S, X, S, Y, no siri, Bob. Drag, nope. H nope, max H. Let's make it 30. Let's make it really long. Oh, and we should also set a radius. A radius is gonna be five. I just want I just want to see something. Okay, let's try this. There they are! Did you see them? They were there. They were just not animating. So let me see. Uh, how do we do? We have a radius speed. See, that's where the payoff comes. Like we did the particles long time ago, um, but it's, it's a it's a pretty substantial system, and you can just easily add uh, something on top. We just need to remember <laughs> remember all the weird weird uh, variable names that we use. I think we had uh, R X uh, R speed. R M S R speed R. Okay, good. So let let us let us let us let us do like a S S R. Let us let us set it to to one. Let's set this to zero. Let's just let's just see how that works. Let's just see. Ah, see. Okay, now that was too big, obviously. 
So let's make the let's just just make it half as, as much. Okay, it's still too much, but okay. Uh, radius zero, yeah, that's good. Let's make it half even. Let's just always half, you know. Half. The the design principle is always half or double. Okay, that's still too big. Um, maybe the um, like in terms of speed, like that was okay. Let's let's just like in terms of um, how long it was on the screen, that was okay. So maybe just need the speed a bit slower. Yeah, see that that's that felt good. Yeah, it seems now now like they they're evaporating. Boom. Now see now this this actually cost twenty seven tokens. So <laughs> this was. <laughs> It was a bit of a token cost associated with that, just with the visual effect. And of course, we had to create the, the, the function as well. So, yeah. All right, all right, all right. But yeah, that means that bullet canceling is done, baby. Let's move over to bullet sealing. Now, bullet sealing is a little bit tougher. It's a bit of a, like, mean to wrap our heads around this a little bit. So basically, when sealing is on, what I want to do is... Uh, if the player is close to the enemy, they need to specify, you need to find out a threshold at which that actually makes makes a difference. So if the player gets closer to the enemy, the enemy won't fire anymore. So the way I think this, when we go through the bullet queue, um, the bullets should just not, just not, not fire. Like um, we just delete the bullets from the bullet queue, not don't fire them anymore, is what I'm thinking. Um, let me first see how do we set it up. All right, so the way we do this is uh, Yeah, we have a layer, right? We don't really have a flag for whether it's sealing or not um, I'm kind of I do, and hmm, I think that we would just make it as a default property of enemies that are on the ground uh, Because my current plan doesn't involve like boss enemies that sh are going to be on the ground so I'm just gonna do like a um, um, executive decision right there. Right there, I'm gonna say like all of the enemies on the ground will have bullet sealing, all of them. And then if there is a situation where we feel like we need a ground enemy without bullet sealing, then we can still retrofit a special property for that. Um, okay, so we're basically gonna say if layer is equal one, then we're gonna bullet seal. Okay. Now the magic will happen down in a uh, bull queue. Bull queue turned out to be quite a quite a substantial function here. Okay, so this is where a new bullet is being fired, right? And basically this part is only get executed if um, the enemy is on layer two, which is a flying enemy, or if the enemy is uh, on layer one and the player is far enough away, is what I'm thinking. So we're gonna go if n dot layer is greater than one or for, for now let's just do something like this all right so we only firing the bullet if the layer is two that would mean that now the, the ground enemies won't um, won't actually fire and actually I want to I want to visually show this somehow b dot sealed uh, n dot sealed equals true i want to visually see the ceiling because the problem is kind of like a negative thing right like I, we're going to do something and then nothing should happen right and we don't know if nothing already happened or not <laughs> and that's difficult to see so i want to visualize this this is just temporary we're going to remove this in a second um but i just want to see uh, when we're drawing the enemies, uh, yeah, here, draw obj e, and then we're gonna go if e dot sealed, then uh, we're gonna do like a print x. We're gonna do like a big x on that enemy <clears throat> to indicate that that it has been sealed. Or it's currently being sealed, right? Um, print x e dot uh, x e dot y. That's what I'm thinking, and then it's going to be red. 
Okay, let me uh, start at a location where I actually see the, the ground enemies. Uh, I think we're gonna need to return to the golden standard of 220. Oh, there's a. Okay, so these are enemies and they're already sealed. Yeah, they're already sealed. So they're no longer shooting. Everything is fancy and good. Okay, but again, this is not what we want. What we want is. And then if, if it's fired, then we're gonna set the seal to false. Uh, but what we want to do now is if layer is equals uh, is greater than one or and then we're going to calculate the distance now this is a bit of a problem because then for basic for every ground enemy we always calculate the distance for every single bullet that we fire and this can be a bit, a bit expensive <sighs> it's gonna be fine um where do we need? Let's let's get the distance. When we do that, do enemies, we do calculate the distance when we're following. So let's just get that. This distance between player sprite and enemy. Yeah, that's good. Maybe we should put this in a function because we're already doing it at least twice, right? Um, there is also potentially ways of calculating distance for because it's like a single ground enemy can maybe fire multiple bullets uh, and then we have to calculate the distance for each bullet that the enemy is firing so we could maybe calculate the distance per queue but only for the enemies that are on the ground. It's, the, the logistics gets a bit complicated if you want to get around the distance calculations. I think it's just easier just to, uh, just to calculate it every for every bullet and then we, if that causes problems that we're going to see later. So if distance uh, blah, 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 blah is smaller than... Now we don't know what a good distance is. Let's go 16 for now and we're gonna see if that's okay or not. Uh... Oh wait, it's greater than 16. Because we are checking for uh, if the distance is far enough away. So let's try this. Okay, they are firing. Now I'm gonna get closer. So this one, the first one got sealed now, see? And now they're no longer firing because they're too low. Okay, so let me let me get right in in their in their grill. Oh, they're, it's still too close. I feel. Let's go 32. Okay, this one is. Yeah, they're not no longer firing now. Okay, no longer. Let me see. Let me go be in, in the center here. Does that seal all of them? That does seal all of them, wow. <laughs> and then the other one comes in and like, that. Ah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I think maybe that was a bit too much. Yeah, I think this is fair. Can I say, when I'm here, now both of them is, yeah, this, this seems okay. Uh, I will send this footage to Actane and ask them maybe if, if that's, that's a good ceiling distance. I don't know. I don't know if that's a good ceiling distance. Oh, we're gonna see. But yeah, no, this this seems okay. Why? Well, something we could do is we, we could maybe just to give it like, a, because it's difficult to judge from a number, right? Let's see if we can uh, draw the, the ceiling. Yeah, just like draw like circ um, PSP, PSPR dot X, PS, PSPR dot Y. Uh, we had set it to 24, now 8. Let's see that like this. Okay, so this is sealing distance. Ooh, yeah, okay. So now this one is sealed. Now these two are sealed. These are sealed. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's interesting because like once you leave the distance, they immediately start firing at you, right? So it's, 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 it's difficult to, <laughs> it's difficult to rely on this too much. See, now, now I, I felt, it felt like I was very close, but, but I wasn't close enough. <laughs> okay, um, all right, so let me delete all of the debug stuff now. And, and that, that basically tackles the ceiling, that was it. <laughs> Today it's a very short episode with <laughs> very simple solutions to complicated problems. Yeah, so now we no longer need this debug stuff and we need to get rid of this. And that, that just works.
Borat Schilling done. Now, because this is a bit of a short episode today, I, I want to maybe add already something that I haven't added, and I'm thinking of adding maybe. I, I'm just gonna. I haven't even tried it. I don't even know if this will work. But I was thinking about. What are you thinking about, Lebowski? I'm thinking about um, adding some kind of hit effects. Um, so we hear when an enemy is being hit. Right now, we don't have any uh, impact effects. Perfect. That's exactly the kind of... Uh, maybe a bit longer. Let's try this. Um, no, this is supposed to sound bad. I, I want to have a test sound effect. And I want to make it so because it's possible to maybe have multiple hits per... Because we have two bullets and this most of the time there's going to be two impacts per frame. So I want to only play one of those sounds when like one of those sounds per frame. I want to make sure that only one sounds of the per frame is played. Um, so let's see. Uh, so we're going to go here and then update game. Yes. Movement, movement, shots versus enemies. So this is where shots versus enemies appear. And this is where we where we actually uh, deleting the enemy. Um, now, if there is an explosion, then maybe we don't need it. Uh, whatever. So we're going to go local hit has hit equals false and then here is where we actually doing the hit no it's here right uh, so we're gonna go has hit equals true or oh, actually we only want to have the hit uh, sound effect only if it actually causes an explosion uh, doesn't cause an explosion right so technically this is just else has it equals true. Um, this is a very long if statement. If one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's one, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's good. And then after all of this is done, we're gonna say if has hit, then SFX, uh, and then <laughs> This beautiful sound effect that we created six six on channel number three. This sounds good. Now I want to make this less obnoxious. <laughs> Maybe something like this, just like a bassy. Let's try this. Hmm, I don't know. Yeah, that's nice. It's a little bit erratic. You can hear that that it's being over overpowered by other sound effects. Let me see. Let me see if I can tweak this a little bit. Nope. All right, it's a bit sharper. Let's try this. Yeah, you can hear that the different sound effects are fighting against each other. Um, it's it doesn't get you don't get that that uh, you, you hear this the rhythm of the hit being interrupted. But that's okay. It's not too bad. I would maybe even lower the volume level a little bit. I think this is good. It's very subtle, but I guess I, that's what I want. Let me let me try maybe some other sound effects. Um, just like to have a different different opinion, so to speak. Uh, let me try noise. Yeah, maybe this. Let's try that. Oh, I kind of like that. Mm. 
Although, yeah, you don't really hear that it's too long. Let's try it like this. What if we try something very different? Let's try this. I kind of like this, maybe quieter. No, nope. Kind of gels nice with some of the explosions. Yeah, I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Um, let me let me keep this around. Maybe maybe a bit lower. Yeah, that seems better. That seems good. So I'm gonna keep this sound effect around, and this other one I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna delete. This was too subtle. All right, so this is finished. So yeah, that was this episode. So next episode I want to deal, because I want to have some time for it. this, is going to be a bit of a difficult challenge. We're going to talk about the bullet origin thing. We're going to talk about retargeting. I'm not sure, really sure if I want to pull that off for just yet. And something that is also missing is uh, enemy uh, fire sounds. We don't have that yet, so we have to deal with that as well. But for now, I'm gonna say the thing I'm gonna say at the end of each episode, which is thank you. Thank you so much for supporting this show on coffee.com. A lot of people are supporting this show on coffee.com and they are making, literally making this show possible. Thank you so much for making it so. And also I want to read out a comment that I just right now got from uh, Rotund Bun on Reddit. Saw your latest video Advanced Shmup 74 and it spurred a sad, certain thought. I wonder if you might find this useful in a blah, 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 bunch of code. Uh, the the returned value contains both rotation and direction, uh, both rotation direction and rotation amount uh, info in a single number. So you can check the sign for direction clockwise, counterclockwise, or ABS for the amount. And then they posted a corrected code. There was something wrong there with diff minus one, and like there was a typo in there. Yes. So this uh, it took me a bit of a while to wrap my head around this. It just uses kind of like very similar code that I use um, myself, like a eight and two and stuff like that. Um, but it uses slightly different way um, so this uses um, so there's a b.x and b.y in this code um, and a.x and a.y these are not the locations of um, of uh, sprites or, or enemies or so forth these are the vectors so like this should be like sx and sy so speed x and speed y so you basically look at the speed like x and y speed at which the enemy is going and then you compare it with you know, kind of like the, the distance the, the direction which should be going and you get the angle from that instead of comparing just angles with each other and that solves a lot of problems with this like unwinding and rewinding like we when an enemy can uh, go more than 360 degrees around and then, then it will spin around until it gets back um, this solves a lot of those problems uh, and it was we went a little bit back and forth with Roton Band on this because first of all I, I first had to wrap, wrap my head around this, but also I'm considering whether I want to use this or not. The reason why I decided not to use this is um, is because we have to be storing the direction of the way we're moving our enemies in in an angle, and then we have a speed, right? So in order to do this kind of calculation, we would have to convert them to like use uh, sine and cosine to convert them into speed x and speed y, which we're doing anyway, but we have to do it before we're doing that. Um, so we have to do this early, then we have to do this, which is also trigonometry, and then we're gonna get an angle out of this, and then we do our animation on the angle, and then we have to convert again with the same sine and cosine. So there's gonna be lots of back and forth on the sine and cosine, stuff like that. Now, this shouldn't be a problem with modern hardware, but <laughs> 
I am a retro developer, right? I grew up in the DOS times. And in the DOS times and retro hardware, sine and cosine was prohibitively expensive. Like trigonometry was crazy expensive in terms of computation. So much so that we had like lock lookup tables, right? It's because calculating sine and cosine was so difficult. We created like an array and filled it with values, with approximate values at the beginning of, of the program. And then we just like looked up in the array instead of actually doing sine and cosine. Uh, modern hardware, obviously very different situation. We have GPUs that I can just like do this very quickly. Uh, but back in the days, like we, you were really, really, really uh, mm, careful about minimizing and oh, ideally removing all of the sine and cosine stuff. Like optimization was about removing sine and cosine or at least making it very, very uh, fast. So this going back and forth multiple times per enemy per frame is 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 making my <laughs> my stomach crawl a little bit. Now I don't know exactly what the costs of the uh, sine and cosine of trigonom trigonometry are in Pico 8. Pico 8 kind of like fakes a little bit old hardware, and sometimes it's it's you know l l l uh, lets you off the hook on certain things that would have been possible on previous hardware. I haven't even checked if sine and cosine is that expensive in terms of computation, but it just feels a little bit bad doing this, so I'd rather not do it. Also, I did some tests on this, and uh, it turns out that I'm actually not saving any tokens. On common contrary, this was actually a little bit more token intensive because converting from the um, from the angle to the vector and then back, like that, all costs a bunch of tokens. And actually, my solution was just uh, 21 tokens, I think, and this is like 35 tokens or so. Like that was my first test, so um, maybe not the best so choice. But I think in a few Future, if I ever did this again from scratch, I would consider maybe something like this, like uh, tracking maybe of the movement and so forth already in vectors and not necessarily in angles because taking advantage of something like this can help a lot. Um, I have to think about this, but uh, I want to point this out as a valid approach to, to handle this sort of stuff as well. It's not that much many tokens and it just like solves a lot of problems at once. Yes, yes, yes. So, moving along, um, next time it's gonna be pretty much the last episode before we move on to the next step, figure out the gameplay stuff, but first we need to figure out how to do bullet origin stuff. I mean to think about enemy sounds. See you next episode, guys. Bye-bye.